apply slope intercept form to this application of cell phone only households. In 2004, it was relatively rare to have a cell phone only household at about 5% of US households. By the year 2017, we were up to about 52.5% of US households with cell phones. And when we look at this data, the data points, which are given about twice a year, are fitting a pattern that might look kind of like a straight line. So we're gonna make the assumption that that's in fact what it is. The first thing we're going to do is let T be the number of years since 2004. So in other words, 2004 is the year zero and we're counting from that. We're gonna let C be the percentage of US households with only cell phones. Again, this is the increasing graph that goes from about 5% to about 52.5%. We'll start by rewriting the years as our newly indexed time. In terms of time, 2004 corresponds to year 0, 2005 to year 1, 2006 to year 2, and we'll just keep counting 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So the year 2017 is time equals 13. In this case, the y-intercept of the graph is where the time is zero. And so the y-intercept of our graph is 5% or just 5. The point would be 0, 0,5. Let's make a slope triangle on this cell photo only graph using the first data point in 2007. That would be this one right here make it a little bigger. The y value is maybe about 15%. And then we're also going to use the first data point in 2010. Again, I'll make that point a little bit bigger. It looks like that y value is about 27. We're going to estimate the slope using a slope triangle. I'm going to pull up my ruler to do this a little bit more accurately. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my horizontal line for the slope triangle and my vertical line the slope triangle. Now on this triangle I'm going to use the variables we're using in the problem. The C values are the vertical axis so the rise is going to be the change in C values and then the run is the change in the time values. The change in C is just the difference between 27 and 15 so our change in C is about 12. To calculate our change in time we could either use years or the time values. In terms of years, we've moved three years forward, or in terms of the t values, we've gone from t equals three to t equals six. Either way, we end up with a delta t of three. So now we can estimate the slope using that slope triangle. We're gonna do the change in dependent variable, so that's delta c over delta t, which is 12 over three, or just 4. Now just to kind of get a sense for what this means, the units on the C axis are percentage and the units on the time axis are years. So we're gaining about 4% per year in terms of US households with cell phone only service. Well now we have a slope and we have the y-intercept, so we can write a slope-intercept equation for this graph. Now if we were writing it in y equals mx plus b form, we would write y equals mx plus b. In this case, we're using c and t, so we'd write c equals mt plus b. Notice that we replaced the x with t and the y with c. Now I just need to insert the slope, which is 4, and the y-intercept, which is 5. This leaves me with c equals 4t plus 5. Writing it with function notation, we could write c of t equals 4t plus 5. Let's graph this equation and see how it matches up to the actual results on the graph. We know that on the graph, cell phone only households in early 2017 was about 52.5%. Let's open Desmos and see what we get when we graph our new equation. 
I have it drawn, C of t equals 4t plus 5. Desmos, we can see it's an increasing line with a y-intercept of 0, 5 and going up with a slope of 4. Now this looks kind of different from the graph that we were originally looking at, but notice that the y-axis is quite a bit off. I'm going to move this so that we're seeing up to time equals 13 on the x-axis, and then let's alter the vertical axis so that we're seeing up to 100%. I'm going to choose the wrench menu on the right-hand side, and for the y-axis, I'm going to change it from its current value to a value of 100 for the maximum y. We were looking at the year 2017, which is t equals 13. Remember that with function notation, I can actually just type in c of 13, and I get a value of 57. I can even plot that on the graph as a point, 13, comma, 57, and we'll see it appear on the line. And so the question was, how does this compare to the actual data? Well, if we go back to the actual data, it looked like in early 2017 we were at, in reality, 52.5%. So this line we created is a little bit off of what happened in reality. And in fact, if I was to go and create this line directly on the graph using those two points that I had there, I'm going to draw this in different color. So I'm just drawing a graph between the two points on our slope triangle. You'll see that the equation for the line that we wrote does, in fact, overestimate the actual data by a little bit. Of course, it's not ideal to only use two points of real data to calculate a line to predict with. If we have 10 points of data, we would want to use all 10 points of data to find the best line that could be used. And we'll do that eventually.